Ben Tippett, senior pastor of Victory Christian Fellowship, followed by Pledge to the Flag by Commissioner Norwood. We all please stand at this time. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful indeed for all of your many blessings. We thank you for our city commissioners and leaders of our city. We ask for your guidance and your will to be done as they seek to lead us. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Mr. Borum. Present. Mr. Campbell. Present. Thank you. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at the minutes from the March 24th meeting? So, second. There's a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to our public recognition section. You guys are all over our newsletter and website, and Facebook. <laughs> all right. Hang on. One, two, three. All right. All right. I'd just like to thank the commission for your leadership and the example that the city of Palatka has shown in uh, making uh, April as National Safe Digging Month. Uh, you know, yes, following suit here in Florida. Uh, historically, the governor has always proclaimed Florida as uh, Safe Digging Month as well. Uh, and we just really love the, the public awareness and the broadcast throughout uh, and helping pl make Florida the safest place to dig. Yes, so sir. we really appreciate y'all, Scott. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have St. John's River Water Management District. We have a representative from Water Management. Please come forward at this time. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for our water comp 
Conservation Month. This proclamation reads, whereas water is a basic and essential need of every living creature, clean and sustainable water resources are vital to Florida's environment, economy, and quality of life. More than 90% of Florida's drinking water is supplied by underlying aquifers. And our quality of life and the economy depends upon upon a reliable, clean, and available supply of water in a healthy environment. And whereas the St. John's River Water Management District is working with the state of Florida, other water management districts, local government, and water supply utilities to increase awareness about the importance of water conservation and to increase efforts to conserve water. And whereas the city of Palaka has joined St. John's River Water Management District in encouraging and supporting water conservation throughout its water supply planning process coordination of education programs, special events, cooperative funding programs, technical assistance and regulatory programs, and whereas all water users, including residential, commercial, industrial, agricultural, and institutional, hospitality, private citizens, and others can make positive contributions to reduce water use and protect Florida's water resources. Whereas the St. John's River Water Management District, City of Black, and other local government utility businesses, agricultural, environmental organizations, and other parties with an interest in water use are developing a comprehensive and long-term water conservation program to instill a lasting culture of conservation in our communities. And whereas the governor and the cabinet of the state of Florida are designating April as Florida's Water Conservation Month to encourage Floridians to conserve the state's precious water resources. Now, therefore, I, Terrell Hill, mayor of the city of Palaka, together with the members of the Palaka City Commission, hereby proclaim the month of April 2016 as Water Conservation Month in the city of Palaka, and I call upon each resident, visitor, and business to protect our precious resource by practicing water conservation measures and becoming more aware of the need to conserve water. And witness where I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the city of Palaka, Florida, on this 14th day of April in the year of our Lord 2016, Terrell Hill Mayor, Commissioners Mary Austin Brown, Rufus Borum, Justin Campbell, James Norwood Jr. Well, thank you for adopting this proclamation. You know, uh, water conservation is so important to all citizens of Florida, and the St. John's River Water Management District is honored to join with the commitment of the city of Palaka. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> our final rock proclamation is for our countywide cleanup on May 21st. Here we have our representatives from <coughs> Putnam Beautiful here. It's Chief Shaw around. <coughs> As Chief Shaw comes forward, we'll read this proclamation. Whereas Palaka Pride is a locally based grassroots movement championed by the City of Palaka Commission, police, code enforcement, and public works staff that has brought public and private sectors together to develop and promote citywide cleanliness, ethic through monthly organized and targeted trash collection, beautification, and renewal drives. And whereas Keep Putnam Beautiful, the local affiliate of Keep America Beautiful, is an organization that envisions work to inspire and educate people to take action every day to improve and beautify their community environment and envisions of Putnam County where every community is a clean, green, and beautiful place to live. And whereas both Keep Putnam Beautiful and Black of Pride are partnered together to promote programs that engage individuals through coordinating events and programs to renew parks, trails, and recreation areas, mm -hmm. clean shorelines and waterways, <coughs> remove litter and debris, reduce waste, and increase recycling and plant trees, flowers, and community gardens in order to inspire a new generation of community stewards who would take greater responsibility for improving their community's environment. And whereas, over a one-year period ending November 2015, Palaka Pride and Keep Putnam Beautiful partnered with local volunteers to pick up over 17,000 pounds of trash through the efforts of 1,310 volunteers with 3,685 volunteer hours. Since December 2015, they picked up an additional 52,640 pounds of trash with 60 groups participating in cleanups, giving an additional 725 volunteer hours. And whereas Palaka Pride and Keep Putnam Beautiful are expanding their area of concern, 
to cover the entire the entirety of Putnam County by organizing county, municipal, business, and civic organizations to come together to support and donate resources and volunteers to participate in a countywide cleanup on May 21st, 2016. Now, therefore, I, Terrell Hill, Mayor of the City of Palatka, together with the members of the Palatka City Commission, do hereby proclaim May 21st, 2016 as Putnam Pride Countywide Cleanup Day in the City of Palatka, and I call upon Putnam County's Board of County Commissioners, the City of Crescent City and Interlaka, the towns of Pomona Park and Wielaka, to issue a like proclamation <coughs> urging its citizens to encourage organizations, businesses, and citizens to do their part to donate time, money, resources, or talent, and otherwise participate in this event to make Putnam County a more beautiful place to live, work, and play. In witness whereof, I appear to set my hand and cause to be affixed to seal the city of Palaka, Florida, on this 14th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2016. Cheryl Hill, Mayor, Mary Lawson Brown, Justin Campbell, Rufus Borough, and James Norwood, Jr. Commissioner. and uh, partnerships with the certain individuals and organizations through Putnam County. We've done a lot with Black Pride and we've asked that uh, more individuals come out and volunteer to help us continue to clean up. Our next cleanup is going to be on the 23rd. Uh, we're asking uh, that, we come, that you come out and help us clean up our Oak Street area. Uh, we are meeting and the We're going to meet here at City Hall for the cleanup for uh, the 23rd, and then we have our, again, countywide cleanup, which is going to be on May 21st. Uh, we ask that you grab a friend, come out and assist with us, and volunteer to help us to make Button County beautiful. And just to follow up a little bit on the countywide cleanup, um, as you heard, we collected over 17,000 pounds of trash within a one-year period. Uh, and, and not only did we, and that just wasn't through volunteers, that was commissioners getting out along with volunteers, along with our staff, along with citizens. Uh, we had parents that would stop by and see what we were doing and bring their kids and just drop them off. But it's a collective effort for Palaka Pride. The vision expanded, and I had this crazy aberration that we would have over 500 volunteers involved in a countywide cleanup. We had several county commissioners who came on board along with Keep Putting Them Beautiful, and we've organized uh, what we believe is gonna be the largest cleanup in this county, in this county's history. But it's an opportunity for us all to collectively take the same initiative in making our county appealing to everyone who lives here, creating a different culture, and also providing a welcoming atmosphere for those who travel through here. And so that's one of the things that we're looking to do. If you're interested, and being a part of that, you can, kind of, you can go to the city's web page. We'll have a link on there to keep putting them beautiful. You can do online signups, or you can contact staff at, at, at the police department through uh, code enforcement, and we'll make sure that we get your name in place and we'll assign you to the proper zone. But May 21st should be a great day for our great Putnam cleanup. We had a contest for the cleanup. We got a student from over in Crescent City, uh, Middleton, uh, Bernie, elementary school who came up with the concept and the tagline which is clean it up green it up and so there's a prize for that student coming up with the tech with the tagline and we're going to make sure we push forward with what we have <coughs> now we'll move on to our public comments public comments will be limited to three minutes no action will be taken on the topics of discussion <clears throat> is there anyone here for public comment Zinni Bess, yes, sir. come forward, give your name and address. Uh, excuse me, my name is Mr. Bess, I live in uh, 280 Drive, Mitchell, Oxford, Florida. It's a pleasure to be here with those fine people today, and thank you for the board for having me speak. I've uh, come here in, uh, to talk about three items, the Homeless Coalition, the uh, Boxing, PAL Boxing Association, and mainly the uh, mental health uh, system that we have established here. Uh, let me start with the mental health system. 
the first and foremost is uh, there are a lot of people that have seen the most fascinating thing about mental illness is that everyone else knows something's wrong with you, but you won't. And as far as our leaders are concerned, it's important for us to recognize that more money is needed, more facilities, in my case, is needed. We're trying to open a psychosocial vocational rehabilitation center, which means uh, if you have you're ever diagnosed with a mental illness, you can join this uh, club and we'll make sure you get everything that you need to help you along your way to become a, a productive citizen again. I myself, my recovery started uh, in, a, in a clubhouse. Clubhouses go around the world, they are around the world. Uh, I went back to work because I had an accident of an by a drug and I had, they, they said you're diagnosed with mental illness. Mental illnesses are hard to, to describe yourself that you have one, or it's hard to accept for the, each, and that, each individual. We need a clubhouse here desperately to make sure that people with mental health issues get the resources that, that are available to them. Most of us walk around, walk around the streets with no help. You know, it's like uh, you're, we don't see them. People are sick. People need help, and the help is here within. And we have the, 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 the agencies to help them, but they don't know that they're there. And, and, and the, the agencies that are, are there are closed mouth. We need a open, we need a, what I'm asking the county for and, and the city of Blackham for is a freestanding clubhouse. A clubhouse that is not funneled through Stuart Marchery Group or not funneled through any mental health agency. We start our own clubhouse. I, I've been talking about this over like six years now. I, I've been in front of all kinds of commissions and, and, and people. One of the most uh, dramatic, and this is going to end this uh, mental health issue. One of the most dramatic uh, uh, thing that I've heard was I said, look, I a community, mental health community board meeting, and I said, most of our people here that have mental illness are, they live in the streets. One of the commissioners up. stood up and said, some of them like to live in the woods. Come on. Moving on. You got 10 seconds, Mr. Best. Okay, can you I move on to my next one? No, you don't get three minutes for each topic. You get three minutes. Okay, uh, boxing. Uh, you got, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to wrap uh, them up. Okay, boxing. PAL, boxing in, in Palak is not here. Why? It's a, a county-run program. It's a government-run program. Uh, okay, Mr. You're, you're, it's run by the Thank county. You, the county actually runs the boxing program for PAL. Okay, we don't have the money that's needed for insurance. I'm speaking to Mr. Todd. Uh, the money for insurance is not there for the kids. And these boxing programs, I know boxers from around the country. I could bring them here, professional champions. I could bring him here to our to our, 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 our celebrations. I could have them come here to the prayer fest, to all this to show okay. pe people that it does work if you give it a chance. Okay. If you get with the county, they've got the program in place, they've got a boxing ring, and you can get with them, and they've got funding. Okay? Thank you, sir. Have a good day. <coughs> Mr. Spells. My name is David Spells. I live at 5019 Avenue. I was at the dentist office today, and I picked up the paper and I saw about this alcohol situation. We supposedly have selected the brightest minds in Putnam County. And I can't see how it would be such a hard decision to be fair in coming up with a solution as far as alcohol for Putnam County. Now, if you had two liquor stores and a street ran between the county and the city, how can you define whether an individual is going to step across the street in the county and buy whiskey and go back into the city? You're not being fair to the store that's in the city. You need to come up with one guideline. Be fair with it. It's either open up after 12 o'clock, city and county, or open up all day for everybody. I mean, the game you're playing now, it's the good old boy system or the special interest. Now, if you're going to do it right, do it right. Be fair to everybody, because you're not being fair to that guy 
in the city and the county can sell his. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone else here for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. <laughs> Moving on to item three of the agenda, the consent agenda. Item A, adopt resolution number 2016-12-25, authorizing the execution of St. John's River Water Management District fiscal year 2016 cost share grant for Booker Park Regional Stormwater Pond Project. B, adopt resolution number 2016-12-26, Authorizing execution of St. John's River Water Management District fiscal year 2016 cost share grant for the Palacra Wastewater Facility Reclaim Water Project. C. Adopt resolution number 2016 12 27, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute and attest a construction agreement with TB Landmark Construction for the replacement of the fluent structure located at Moody Road and St. John's Avenue left lift station. D. Adopt resolution number 2016 12 28. Authorizing execution of the contract for professional services with Castle Bay Design Studio LLC for playground design associated with FERDAP project number A16072, grant agreement for Riverfront Park phase one. E, adopt resolution number 2016 12 29, authorizing the elimination of the code enforcement fines, liens, and fees levied against 1506 Napoleon Street. F, adopt Eddie M. Wilson to the Palaka Planning Board for the remainder of a three-year term to expire December 31st, 2016. G, grant permission to exceed allowable noise levels for special events permit number 16-28, Arts Council Spring and Summer Concert Series, Saturday, April 23rd, 2016, Saturday, May 14, 2016, Saturday, June 4th, 2016, Friday, June 17th, 2016, Monday, July 4th, 2016, Including permission to serve alcoholic beverage at the riverfront from 3 p.m. until 10 p.m. July 4th only, July 30th, 2016, and Saturday, April, August 13, 2016. All concerts except the 4th of July shall occur between 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. Arts Council <coughs> of Greater Palaka, Denise Aiken, <coughs> applicant. Are there any items on the consent agenda that you wish to have removed? Motion to approve. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second by Commissioner Campbell. Question. Question's been called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item number four. Appointment of Palaka Housing Authority Board. Three-year term to expire April 14, 2019. <coughs> Two applicants, Marshall Fulgham, Daryl W. Futch. There's also, uh, we just recently received a third application uh, from Will Jones as it relates to the application for the Palaka Housing Authority Board. I think in light of the fact that we got additional interest in this, I would suggest that we extend the, that we extend the application period um, until our next meeting and bring this and bring this vote back unless the commission has some other Pleasure. So I'm going to table until our next meeting. And then we're going to extend the application period yes. as well? Yes. Yes. Second. second. So motion forward and second. <coughs> Is there any discussion? Question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item five, public hearing and resolution. The annual fire assessment, item A, public hearing on non ad valorem fire assessment, fire service assessment for fiscal years 16 and 17. B, annual assessment resolution for fire service assessments fiscal year 16 and 16 through 17 based on the same rate and exempt property direction given by the city commission fiscal year 15 through 16. We have a <clears throat> resolution, I'm sorry. Can we read? Yes. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Palatka, Florida, approving the fiscal year 2016-2017 non ad valorem assessment role to fire protection services facilities and program, addressing the collection of an amount equivalent to unpaid fire service assessments, if any directing certification of the assessment role and collection pursuant to the Uniform Assessment Collection Act, 
confirming required statutory notice and imposing and levying fire service assessments, providing directions and providing an effective date. So move. Is there a motion on the floor? Is there a second? There's a second by Commissioner Campbell. We're now within the floor of the public hearing. Sharon Gilgore. Kilgore. Sharon Kilgore. Please come forward. Your name and address for us, please. Yes, my name is Sharon Kilgore, 200 James Street, Black Hawk Park. This is my first time ever attending any of your meetings. So, if you're going to keep having these fire taxes, you'll see me probably quite often. We have a fire assessment. Yes. Anyway, I was trying to bring it to your attention that we're senior citizens to try to lower the taxes for 16 and 17. I think the 50-year bail them out from all the money they've got from the river all the way out to the end of the city. And so, I don't think that they need as much money for 16 and 17. Also, we need to have a letter stating the monthly payments. I don't think it needs to be added to your regular taxes. It makes my mortgage go up. I know it does that to a lot of other people. And you have to send it to the bank and then you pay your thing to the bank. So, that's all I have to say. Just don't add it to your regular taxes and send out monthly bills and then we can break it down and pay for it that way. When you add it on top of the taxes we already pay them, then we have to pay into our bank. It makes it go up a lot. I try to keep my mortgage low so I can afford the mortgage. Thank you. Thank you. George Monkhouse. Well, here we are again, a year later. Can you say your, you your name and address for us, please? Yes, sir. Monkhouse. George Monkhouse, over the 1420 Police Out 15 Street, right next to the ravine. Yes, sir. Okay, start from the top. Last year we had a meeting in which it was put out, if I remember correctly, that it's going to start out at X amount of dollars, and then the following year it's going to be reduced. Okay? That was what was put out in the meeting. I'm fine with that. I just like to see it reduced. I think an additional $450 a year, you paying in ta uh, non average tax, regardless of what you want to call it, it's still a tax. Okay? And I don't like taxes, and I'm not supposed to pay taxes. Okay? totally disabled American veteran, okay? And by state law, I'm not required to pay taxes. Now, the other hand, my point is, what's to stop you from coming up with another non-abalorm tax? And another one, every time your budget gets out of whack. That's not cool. And I get stuck paying those, okay? Now, I, have to, I can afford to pay what I pay, but I asked for a reduced reduced rate for disabled people last year. That didn't carry no weight with anybody, and that's fine. But y'all did say that the rate was going to be reduced this year. So I don't expect to get a $450 bill this year. Okay? If I do, I'll be back next year, and I'll be a little bit higher. Thank you. Kitchens. <coughs> I live with Kitchens 1027 down 12th Street. You all know I've been against this fire service fee, which is a tax, as the late judge at TV said, a tax being in the name is still a tax. However, 
it is what it is. And what I would like to ask you tonight is please do not put this off of the ad for tax bill. Let the city keep on sending out the bills and doing the collection. That way it gives the citizens some degree of protection. And like one of the other people said, it will increase their mortgage payments. So please do not put this on the ad for tax bill. And again, I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else here for public comment? See no one else here for public hearing, I'm sorry. We'll close public hearing at this time. Is there any discussion from the commission? I'd like to um, say something. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Mahaffey, who used to be our tax collector, and he said if we put uh, it on, our, on the tax bill, that there are other fees that go along with it. Has anybody talked to us about that? I think the city manager and also Mr. Reynolds have, it, and along with Mr. Lawson, and have had extensive communication as it relates to um, what happens when the fire assessment fees go on the tax bill. Um, they've gone, they've actually had uh, quite a few educational sessions as it relates to that, um, providing certain information to people at, about the process. Um, so I, I think that that has been explored. It's been explored um, at length. And if anybody else wants to add anything, you can. But is there any other comments? That means there is a error, I guess, on page 11, the date. Why we just that I guess I would like to say also, uh, while we're turning that page, uh, I am concerned about individual mortgages uh, being tied to it. Because when you go ahead and take out a mortgage, you take out a mortgage at a set rate. And, and I know as you get older and you're senior citizen, especially, you don't have the opportunity a lot of times, uh, based on your income, uh, to make the adjustments and still live the quality of life that you probably desire to live once uh, before you retire as well. Uh, so that, that is a concern. Uh, I do know uh, they, they set up escrows for those accounts and that's tied to your mortgage payments as well. So that, you know, I, that particular comment was a valid comment. I, I guess my question, Commissioner, would be uh, if you raise the if you raise the millage rate as had, as it had been done historically, the same thing happens, mm -hmm. and there wasn't much consideration for increasing the millage rate over the years, and having the same communication as it relates to a monthly mortgage payment. The other, the flip side of the equation is if we reduce if we reduce our millage rate when we set our millage rate this year. We reduce it further and we have a baseline reduction from the implementation of the fire assessment fee and mortgages go down are we going to have complaints because people are going to pay less for the mortgage and so that's the other <clears throat> question because right now we're at 6.99 based upon that if we reduce the mortgage if we reduce our millage rate further and we get to a baseline reduction the mortgage payments are going down so are we going to have a complaint that people are paying less and they got a reprieve and so at that point that's the next question for me no, you're going to have ecstatic. They'd, they'd be excited at that point. So no, don't work like that. You won't be you using your mortgage on Well, sir, you're not. Right now, it's a, it's a conversation between the commission. You've already had your public, you're, you've already had your, your time during public hearing. And so that's, that's, that's my question. And I, and I guess if we're saying <coughs> the purpose of the fire assessment fee was to try to provide a certain level of reprieve for our citizens because we had the 11th highest millage rate. Mm -hmm out of any municipality in the state of Florida. What we were able to do off of that was we were able to reduce the millage rate immediately 
from 9.174 to 6.99. We're within, we're within dollars of reaching our anticipated goal of compliance with the fire fee, fire fee for this year, um, which puts us in a position where the consideration of the reduction becomes a very plausible thing. And so if that happens, then we're, able, we're in a position where we can look to try to provide additional relief, which again, puts people in a more positive situation than they did in 2015. And, and Mr. Mayor, I understand exactly what you're saying, but also, uh, and I understand also we have to have a method of collection, yeah, as well. And I guess my question is, is there any way that we can uh, somewhat, I guess, lack of, with the lack of a better term, uh, ease the burden for those individuals that uh, that this that the assessment, as long uh, along with I have a lawyer taxes uh, tied to, tied to the mortgage, and I don't know that question. I'm not an attorney. I don't know how that's basically done. That's my that's my question. The answer is. Um there's an opportunity to make payment arrangements, even as it relates to that lower of taxes, um, <coughs> quarterly basis. Um, but also, the additional reduction in millage provides that same easement. Well, sometimes when you look at your taxes, man, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like that when every other agency, it doesn't look like that when every other entity is still raising their taxes but, and we're lowering our millage rate. But I want to ask is this, is it going to be either another year we can go and look at what formula we took to uh, put how much it would be on it and be able to maybe reduce the fire fee some? Every year you have an opportunity to look at that. You, it's an, the, fire, the fire fee isn't something that's not going to be looked at on an annual basis. It's on an annual basis, you make a determination if you're gonna have it, you make a determination, you, you have the opportunity to set your rates, you have an opportunity to set your millage rate. Okay, so you're saying we get ready to set our millage rate now if we're in where we think near, where we think we wanna be, will we be able to? Um, reduce it? Yeah. Yes, we, every year we have the opportunity to reduce the millage rate, regardless of whether we have a fire fee or not. Well, I know that with millage, but I mean that fire fee people, when we, when we look at it sometimes, add it on top of, of the taxes. We want to make sure that those folks that we serve, uh, our senior citizens and folks that are ill and stuff are able to keep their homes. We don't want anybody to be where they, they lose their homes. I was told they didn't have that many hardship cases that came in this year. And I want to make sure that when we look at our budget for this nature, that we make sure we consider what we can do if it's possible. And, and, and I think that that's the purpose of the fire fee, is the fact that we're looking at the number of hardships that we have. We're looking at the fact that we have the 11th highest millage rate in the state of Florida prior to the reduction. And we're looking at ways that we can logically provide some relief to people who are paying high taxes. And I think the easiest, the, the, the really one of the only solutions we had at that time was the fire fee because it gave us absolute control of, on an annual basis of how we reduced that, how we logically reduced the millage rate and funded the service. And that's what we're looking at doing and doing it in an equitable manner so that there is reprieve for everyone. And I know most people don't know that about 51 or 52 percent of the population that pay Avalorum tax are carrying the burden of, of the city's, what the city needs in budget to take care of everybody. And in combination of what has been, I mean, what had happened in the, in the past, we, some of the non um, 5013Cs and some of the other nonprofits, they have also been incorporated in order to help defray some of the costs from the 51% that have been paying all along. So it kind of helps spread out things a little bit more equitably. And we have not uh, hit those entities with the full rate. So uh, again, we're assessing it every year. We're not where we need to be. And uh, we just, 
I, I think we need to do that for the city. I'm gonna, I, I think everyone forgets that we were uh, on the verge of bankruptcy. And I think that's probably the most critical piece of this whole puzzle. We were on the verge of bankruptcy, and if you recall those, those meetings that we had, I think the most profound statement made was that everybody needs to have some skin in the game. You know, I don't think the conversation would be as prolonged. I don't think we would have as many people who would be upset if we had merely raised the millage rate as everyone else had done historically. But because we've creatively tried to use the tools that are in the toolbox in order to provide relief over time, it's not immediate relief because we didn't get in this situation right away, but it was, it was plausible that everyone would pay a higher rate the first year and by the second year that everyone would see a reduction from the baseline of where we started and where we are right now based upon um, the numbers. How far are we off right now, Mr. Reynolds? Based on what we budgeted? Yes, sir. We've actually collected a little bit more than what we budgeted. We've collected, we, we collected what we've collected, what we budgeted plus. Mm -hmm. And so it puts us in a position where now we can look at providing additional relief to citizens. And that, and I think the uniform collection method puts us in the light most favorable to be able to do that and have the compliance that we have as it relates to yearly payments of applicable taxes. Um, and again, we still have our processes in place which provide relief. And so those reliefs don't stop. The hardships don't stop. All the, all the processes that we had in place are still there. And so at the end of the day, I just want to see if we have the same conversation when your taxes go down. I guess my, I guess my question was not about the overall fee. I guess we relegated to a point that we're in. The fee's there. We, we, we understand that. <clears throat> just if my comments was based on the comments the young lady made concerning her mortgage, mm -hmm. and just want to know was there any opportunity <coughs> within. Uh, whether, whether it be hardships or whatever, it's been an opportunity uh, to, to give her some relief uh, to make it more pal palatable for her to make her her payments, being that it's tied to her bank mortgage. She does have the opportunity, if it becomes a hardship, to uh, apply through the city, through the city manager and, 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 and our finance director. It's spread out monthly. If it provides a hardship for her. If it provides a hardship, it still has to be paid. Yeah. Understand it. But it still has to be paid. It can be deferred. But if you're budgeting and you're able to have quarterly payments, I actually think the quarterly payments seem to be more plausible than five months to pay um, that we had based upon what was in place before. If you got a quarterly payment and all you're doing is budgeting X amount of dollars per month towards that and making and making the payments every quarter, it, whether you pay the mortgage company or you pay or you come to City Hall and make the payment, it still is one and one. It, it's the same process. It's the same money. Would it also depend on what taxes to that the uh, school board and the water management district and the county? Is them really our, down for our calculations have nothing to do with anybody but us. I, but y'all have to pay that tax. I mean, but they, we, they send you one tax bill and it's all one minute. And we're all beholden to those entities when they set their rates. There's nothing we can do to change them. The only thing we can do as a commission is make sure that we try to do what's best for our citizens. Any further discussion? You want questions? Call questions. Roll call, please. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Norwood? Yes. Mayor Hill? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Moving on to item B, annual assessment resolution. Moving on to item number six, resolution confirming Smith McCrary Architects Incorporated provide scope of work for design and construction <coughs> administration of water taxi terminal building and Riverfront Park restrooms. Mr. Griffin. 
research. Uh, Jonathan Griffin, Public Works Director. Um, as I informed you at the last meeting, um, our deadline for the water taxi grant is September of this year. Uh, the biggest outstanding scope component is the construction of the water taxi terminal and restroom building. We have an approved contract with Smith McCurry Architects. It's already gone through procurement review with FDOT and FHWA. Um, I reached back out to them. Um, they have given you an alternative uh, scope of work. Um, you basically construct the necessary terminal and restroom building minus the restroom. Um, and that is what's before you tonight. All right. Well, I had a question about. Yes, sir. Can we get the, can we get the re resolution first? Yes. Sure. Resolution of the City of Palatka, Florida, confirming Smith McCurry <coughs> Architects Incorporated revised his <coughs> work for the design and construction administration of the water taxi terminal building and Riverfront Park restaurants. So moved. Second. Let's on the floor in a second. Since he's down this restaurant, we keep, we keep everything up except the restaurant, and we need to move forward with it, so I call for questions. Well, before, we call, before we call the question, let me open the floor for public hearing. Is there anyone here for public hearing? Seeing no one here for public hearing, we'll close public hearing. Is there any discussion from the commission? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the uh, I saw in there where it said that the uh, amount of the contract would not change, but the scope of the project would change based on not having the kitchen and uh, a couple other things in there. So, how does the price not, how does it not adjust if we're not going to add those um, components? Just simply, Commissioner, because they've already done a considerable amount of work that they've been paid for. Um, and, you know, as a result of the contract negotiations and the scope of work kind of being uh, not definitive, uh, as it's, you know, relates to a restaurant and terminal building combined together. Um, what's left is equal to what we'd be building. It's, it's proportional to, it's a, um, uh, what's a better way of saying this? The percentage is within the range based upon the construction cost for the lesser building based upon what's left in their scope or left in their contract price that hasn't been expended. Has that been spelled out? I, I didn't I didn't see it in this I didn't see it in the um, no sir but what's left as far as um, construction dollars would be somewhere in the range of two hundred thirty two thousand dollars after the soft costs are taken out soft costs including permitting geotechnical and architectural and engineering costs uh, so that leaves us somewhere in the, <coughs> the hundred and thirty to hundred and fifty eight dollars square foot um, range for the building and I, I believe we have somewhere in the range of thirty to thirty five thousand dollars left uh, to be paid out on the current contract with Smith McCrary. So it's within the acceptable range. I have a question. Are we gonna see any renderings of what they go do? Um Yes, ma'am, we can come back with the concept. Um, it's actually spelled out they have to develop a concept within that scope of work, um, and we'll be going back in front of the planning board for a certificate of appropriateness uh, because it does fall within the South Historic District. And there were some other things in there, too, where it said it was going to, you know, as a reminder, you know, future gas, water, sewer, and grease traps, all of those things going to need to be added, and I guess, in, in, in it's not part part of that cost yeah the architect wanted to make it known they're not doing any kind of design associated with a restaurant so this just involves uh, the design um, and bid documents for a terminal and restroom building mm -hmm. yeah, is, that is there is there going to be uh, any consideration for possible <coughs> expansion of the facility uh, in the future Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, and it's actually noted within the scope of work that there is, uh, it will be designed in such a fashion to um, basically accept an expansion. Mr. Holmes. Jonathan, did you say your date was September of this year? Mm -hmm. Now, is that for completion of the project? That's the entire project, Mr. Holmes. That's for completion, construction, CO issued, everything? Yes. And you're already <clears throat> mid-April? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of your bringing back markups or drawings or whatever and, uh, and so forth, you're obviously going to have to be on a pretty accelerated schedule, aren't you? 
Uh, and uh, we'll probably be requesting one final extension from FDOT and FHWA. Uh, but based upon my experience, we don't like to ask for those extensions unless we've shown progress. Uh, so we'll be on an accelerated schedule for design, and once we're shovel ready, we'll probably you know, uh, request a, an extension from FDOT, because it's not feasible to think that we're going to have CO by September this year. Okay. That was my question. It didn't sound feasible to me either. But I'd like to say, Mayor, that I'd like to see renderings before, even if we have to have a quick call meeting to, to approve of them, because when we, we started doing price marking, we thought it was going to look like the train station, and they shimmered along a little bit, and it, I, I looked at it, and to me, it would have looked much better if it had done, been like the train station. Uh, we had to take what we could get, but we want something that's really going to look good down there, yeah. and it's something that we're going to enjoy and like. So uh, the architect needs to, to step it up for us. Stonewater and all is already been taken care of. Right? <coughs> yes, sir. It's already permitted. Uh, we are going through a permit modification uh, with the CDBG grant. Uh, we have approximately 11 or 12,000 square foot of impervious to reduce from the scope of work from that project. But all the buildings that are conceived are covered within that um, conceptual, or not conceptual, but comprehensive permit that even includes the private redevelopment sites. Right. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. Question from the call? Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Norwood? Yes. Commissioner Boren? Yes. Mayor Hill? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries in that initial meeting. Mayor, can I say one, I have one more thing to ask? <coughs> Since we are not having a restaurant in that building, and the reason Coffee Bell was pulled out because he thought they were going to have a bigger restaurant, is it possible or feasible to approach them about putting the restaurant back in the golf course? If we haven't got any bites on getting something in, if we need a restaurant back in the, on the golf course with that grant. I'm asking you, is that something we should look at? I'm sorry, what was the question? About potential going back with a restaurant at the golf course, if the restaurant at the, at the uh, facility on the river is not going to be feasible. Uh, we just closed out the RFP for the for the golf course. I just wanted you to, uh, you know, to expound on the fact that we closed it out. We'll be going through the uh, process of review of those RFPs. Yeah, I haven't reviewed them myself to make sure that all the documents are in there, but I believe we have four complete responses, okay. um, and they're being distributed to the um, evaluation committee members right now. Okay, as long as because we need to get that going too. Yes, ma'am. We're we're pushing it as fast as we can. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to item number seven on the agenda discussion about Sunday morning alcohol sales. And as it relates to this particular topic, um, this is the conversation that I wanted to have with the commission um, as it relates to Sunday morning alcohol sales. I've got one speaker card, Ms. Allegra Kitchens. I'll let her go ahead and speak, and then we'll proceed with the discussion from there. And I want to have this conversation because I've, I've come across several people, several different merchants throughout this community, and also citizens who have a concern as to why uh, alcohol sales aren't permitted on Sunday morning. 
Um, when you look at this particular ordinance, uh, you're able to purchase alcohol from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, Monday through Saturday, and Sunday from 1 p.m. until 12 midnight. New Year's, they're falling on a Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 4 a.m. So they're extended hours for New Year's Eve. And then if New Year's Eve falls on a Sunday from 1 p.m. until 4 a.m. And so I, the, in looking at this and reading in the literal portion of it, it looks as though the purpose of the restriction is based upon religious reasons um, as it relates <coughs> to uh, churches. Being privy to those conversations back in 2005 when this was adopted, um, I'm wondering if, 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 if the purpose had some consideration to do with churches, then we have churches that have services on Saturday. And so are we, so is there an issue on Saturday? So why isn't there a prohibition on Saturday? But we shouldn't be legislating morality anyway. What we should be doing is looking at the law and determining if there's a rational relationship from a health, safety, or welfare position to determine if there's a need um, for the prohibition. I, I think the climate in this community is far different than it was in 2005. Um, and so uh, I think that when we look at this overall, we have to determine from a safety perspective, does the prohibition of alcohol sales on Sunday morning provide any additional safeties than it does before? I think cutting alcohol sales off at 2 a.m., and my time's up. I think cutting alcohol sales off at 2 a.m. is a good thing um, as it relates to what we have in place. Uh, we understand that the later we continue to have alcohol sales, there's a greater propensity to have uh, driving under influence charges and things of that nature. Um, but I, I'm really leery about the restriction just on Sunday when we allow morning purchases everywhere else. We've got merchants in this community uh, who sell alcohol and that's their primary source of income. We've got other merchants who do who sell alcohol such as Publix and some of the other places in this community who also uh, sell alcohol. And we have restaurants who've indicated that they, they would want to have simple things such as mimosa or Bloody Marys during Sunday brunch and they're limited on it. So whenever we talk about time, place, manner restrictions um, for the purposes from a government standpoint, then those things have to be rationally related to some safety, to some safety component. I've got a listing of the DUIs that we've had since 2010. And we've got 77 DUIs since 2010. Uh, the heightened periods are always Christmas, New Year's Eve, the holidays. When I look at this report, I don't see any of those DUIs taking place during those heightened periods. And those are the times in which we have extensions on alcohol sales from 7 a.m. to 4 a.m. on New Year's Eve. We have no crashes during that period where we have any alcohol sales during that time period. Um, and so, and looking at this data, I think the conversation, there needs to be some additional collection and some reporting to see if, in fact, there is some restriction <coughs> as it relates to, if there's some, if there's some problem, I don't say restriction, but if there's a safety issue as it relates to starting alcohol sales <coughs> at 7 a.m. versus start for every day as opposed to um, starting alcohol sales at 1 p.m. 1 p.m., which still isn't consistent with the county's ordinance, um, because in the, in the second part of this is merchants are merchants who are within who are situated within the city limits find themselves in a far worse position than anywhere else, because now an individual can go into the county and make a purchase and then come back into the city and consume. And if we're talking about safety aspects of it, and we're worried about whether it's gonna be an increase in DUI or alcohol-related crime, having a person purchase the alcohol and drive somewhere else is probably worse than anything else we can do. 
If we'll have them drive further out to get to it, that's probably one of the worst things that we can do overall. But I think that there is, it isn't fair to the merchants. I don't see the logical relationship between the restriction of the date um, and after practicing criminal law for 17 years. I don't recall ever having a case where I had a person who